Hello, this is a video, whoops. <laughs> I will not hurt myself too much throughout the course of this video. Uh, let me, let, I'm not just gonna start again. Uh, hello, this is a video about arrays in Java slash processing. In fact, and I'm gonna use Processing 3, which is uh, my new song, my new album, Processing 3, coming out, I don't know, many years from now when I'm not making videos about programming, but making albums about singing about programming. Okay, so uh, what is an array? Why do you wanna use one? How does it work? And what kinds of things can you do with it? Um, that's the topic of this video. So uh, perhaps you're familiar with this idea of a variable. Int num equals seven. So you have a variable, the name is num, the type is int, integer, and the value is seven. But what if you wanna have a whole bunch of numbers? You wanna have number one and number two and number three and number four, you'd have to make all these variables. Well, an array is essentially a way in a single variable of having a list of values. And those things can be numbers or pieces of text, it could be an array of images. There's a list of anything that's a piece of data in a program, you can have a list of that thing. And it, you know, aside, there's an aside here. I'm not gonna talk about objects in this video, but arrays and objects is a particularly powerful thing. Link below that I will make sure to add to videos about arrays and objects. Okay, so how do you make this list? Well, with a variable, you always need a name and a type. So with an array, an array is a variable, but it's a list of, you know, uh, uh, I I think of a variable as a single value, an array is like a list of values. Anyway, so <laughs> with the array, which I'll call nums, you also need to give it a name, nums, and a type, integer. But you add this extra bit of syntax, square brackets, square brackets, square brackets. So look on your keyboard now, find the square brackets. If you haven't used them before, you're gonna need them a lot with arrays. So now I have an array of numbers, and I can initialize it instead of as a single value, I can use curly bracket seven comma five comma negative 32 comma 90. So now you can see I have an array of one, two, three, four values. So I'm gonna go start a sketch and add this. Whoops, I'm gonna go over here and start a sketch and add this. So I'm gonna say at the top, int uh, nums, equals, uh, and I'm gonna make them like 30, 40, uh, 40 10, uh, five. Arbitrary numbers. And you can see here, there we go. That's the syntax for an array. Now there are other ways you can initialize an array. You can use a loop. I'm gonna get to that in a little bit. This is just one way to start off this list of values. So now the, comes the question. Over here, if I wanted to use the value, let's say I wanted to use that value num, so to draw an ellipse at 100 comma 50 and with a size num. So I wanted to use this particular value to be the size of a circle. I just take that variable and I put it in the width and height arguments of the ellipse function. So how, what if I want to use this one or this one or this one, some value from this list, from this array, ellipse 100 comma 50, hmm. Nums, what? Ha, huh. I mean, I know the answer to this. I don't know why I'm pretending like I have to figure this out. The issue is, this is a single value, so you can put it right here. It needs to be a single value here. I need to address one of these particular values, and the way that I do that is with an index. An index is an address into the array. It's like counting the array. You can say like, here's number one, number two, number three, number four. Ah, except I've got a problem here. I mean, actually, I have a, I am, this makes me very happy, but it's a weird thing how you count with arrays in programming. You can think of this as having four elements. This is the first element, the second element. What I've told you is accurate. However, counting with arrays, this is technically index zero. So when you're counting the elements of the array, you start with zero, not with one. So this is element zero, this is element one, this is element two, and this is element three. The index values go from zero to three with a total of four elements. So to individually address one of these, nums index three. Uh, once again, the square brackets. Square brackets are just the syntax of arrays. I'm gonna have an array and now I'm addressing not the third element, right? Index number three, which is technically the fourth element. And now, 
if you look at this, this line of code will draw a circle of size 7, and this line of code will draw a circle of size 90. If I change this to 1, I'll get 5. If I change it to 0, I'll get 7. So that's piece number one. Let's go and add that here into this program. Uh, and so now I'm going to say void setup. I'm going to say size uh, 400, 400. And I'm going to in draw, I'm going to say background 0 and fill 255. And then I'm going to say ellipse at you know, uh, 100, 200, nums, index 1, nums, index 1. So let me zoom back out here and run this code and look at the result. And you can see here, ta-da! I'm doing like singing today, I don't know why. Uh, <clears throat> that's not really singing, saying ta-da, but whatever. Um, the, uh, the, the size of that circle is what? 30? 40? 0 is 30, 1 is 40. The size is 40. Let's see it get a little bit, uh, quite a, if I change this to nums index 2, Now look at that, I've got a tiny one. Now, there's a few things I could add to this, and I'm not sure which direction to go in, but I'm gonna go in a certain direction. <laughs> this is the direction I'm going in right now. Let's, let's draw a circle with all of those. So there are four elements, uh, zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Hmm. Now let's draw them a little bit spaced out at 100, 200, 300, 400, and I'll make the size uh, 500. Now, look at this, and let's make these numbers a little bit bigger, uh, 50, uh, 92. So you can see what's going on here. If we zoom the screen in a little bit just to look at all of this, I've got four circles at different x values, 100, 200, 300, 400. Each circle is pulling its width and height from that array. Index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3. So this is working pretty, this is a nice idea. No, I have talking about this for seven minutes. But this, and this works well, like this is sort of like helping us. Instead of having four separate variables, I have a single variable with a list of four items, but I still have to have four lines of code down here, which is kind of ridiculous, right? I mean, it's not ridiculous, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the problem comes up, what if I have 100 values in that array? What if I have 200 values in that array? I don't want to have 200 lines of code. However, you'll notice there's a kind of logic here. Start with zero, go to one, go to two, go to three. This is kind of counting. Do you remember? I don't know where you've come from or why you're watching and if there's enough light in here, if you, but anyway. Uh, do you remember there was a time where you hopefully probably learned about a for loop and if you didn't, I will link you to a video about a for loop below where you wrote something like this, or I, I've done this many times. 4 int i equals 0, i is less than 4, i plus plus. Now, if, uh, this is like a terrible pen, if I were to put, oh, much better, print line i right in here, this loop would run, and first it would print out the value of 0, then 0 would go up by 1, it would print out the value 1, then 0 would go up by 2, and this, and then it would print out the value 2, and then up by 3. 1, it would print out value 3. We get, we get 0, 1, 2, 3, then i would be 4. 4 is not less than 4, the loop would exit. So notice how a for loop is a structure that can be used to count a variable from 0 up to some limit like 4. Well, this is exactly the structure that we need over here. So if I come back to this code and I say 4 int i equals 0, i is less than 4, i plus plus, and then I grab this, I take this line of code and put it here. Well, now, couldn't I replace that index 0 with i? So this loop, and let me uh, give myself a little more space here. This loop, I'm going to comment this out. This loop is now doing the job of what this code did before. Instead of manually having to type 0, 1, 2, 3, this loop uses i to do nums i, nums 0, num, nums 1, nums 2, nums 3. Now, let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so that worked, it, but it looks wrong. Why does it look wrong? Ah, all the circles are at value 100. 
and I wanted the circles to be at 100, 200, 300, 400. Well, over here, remember the loop is counting i, 0, 1, 2, 3. What happens if I multiply each of those numbers by 100? Times 100, times 100, times 100. I get 0, I get 100, I get 200, I get 300. Oh, but I wanted 100, 200, 300, 400. I know. Why don't I just add 100 to each of these? So you can see another thing we can do, i might be the index into the array, 0, 1, 2, 3. But we can also apply some math to i to do other interesting things. Like here, instead of now saying 100, what if I were to say i times 100? That gives me 0, 100, there you are, 0, 100, 200, 300. And then what if I add 100 to that? Then I have 100, 200, 300, 400. So let's now run this. And we have exactly what we had before, with, albeit, only these values. Now, one thing I should mention, two things I should mention, three, 50 things I should mention, but you know, this has been going on for 11 minutes. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, because I think I'm going to try to cover every, you know, just sort of all the array stuff just in this video. But there's a couple things I should mention. One is I don't love that I have the number 4 there. This is sort of a hard-coded value. What if I were to add more values to the array? I still would only loop through four of them. So one thing you can do with an array is nums.length. Uh, let me just turn off the code completion. Um, so nums.length dynamically resolves to the length of the array. So if I were to add another one, you know, uh, uh, 75, you can see I've added an extra, value, an extra number, which got me an extra circle. And now it's looping through the entire array. It's always using the length. And you know I could space them out a little bit less. Like, let's space them out just by 50. So we can see, ah, now they're kind of crowded together. Aha. But what, what was the other thing I want to show here? Well, this is one way to initialize an array. I just give it some hard-coded numbers in between those curly brackets. However, what I might actually like to do more often, I'm trying to think of where to do this, is give the array initial values that maybe are random. So let's say there were uh, uh, eight values. And I want to say nums index i equals int random somewhere between 10 and 100. So this is, this is code that is filling the array with a random number. Loop starting from 0 all the way up to 8. Pick a random number between 0 and 100 and add, put that in the array. But th a funny thing about arrays is that you, uh, you have to specify in advance the size you want that array to be. Now, there are ways around this and ways of expanding, contracting an array. And I have other videos that cover that. But for the purpose of this discussion right now, the array is a, has a fixed length. So we saw that one way to get that fixed length is to just manually type in the values. But what if you don't know the values in advance? You just want to know how many things should be in there. Well, the syntax for doing that is a little bit goofy looking. But if you're not filling it manually between the curly brackets, what you need to say is you want a new integer array with like 100 spots in it. So this is your number to make up. So this seems very redundant. I'm having an integer array called nums, which is a new integer array with 100 spots in it. But two things are going on here. This is declaring your intention to have an array. And this is actually creating the array, allocating the space in the computer's memory to store 100 values. So if I come back over here, uh, I, can change, I, I can change this top code here to say new int eight, I want eight spots, nums.length. And let's just clean up how we're drawing this. I'm going to say uh, no fill and stroke 255 so we can kind of see. And let's make them a little thicker. I don't know. This is very silly, but stroke weight four. Uh, so the point of what I wanted to show you is that now you can see here, every time I run this sketch, I'm going to get a new result. Every time I'm going to create an array with eight spots, every time I'm going to fill that array with eight random numbers, and then uh, I'm going to always loop through that array and draw a circle using each element from the array. So here we go. Run it again just to see. Oh, look at those differently sized circles. Run it again. Look at those differently sized circles. So for you, um, 
you know, I might think of a couple exercises here to try. Number one is, what if your array, instead of having numbers in it, maybe, maybe you know about strings, maybe you don't, but what if you made an array with strings in it? Hello, my friend, right? This is an array with three strings, three sequences of characters. So could you display every time you run the sketch a random one of those strings in the center of the canvas window? Or could you do something as you click the mouse, you see one message one at a time? How would you do that? So those are two interesting exercises to try. This particular scenario that I've made here, I'm looping through the entire array each time, but what if you just want to use one number one at a time or one string one at a time? That's, another, that's one thing you can look at. The other thing that I think is crucial to mention is that one reason to learn this is that the, all the stuff in the window that you're seeing here is an array of pixels, an array of colors. So underneath the hood uh, of a processing sketch, of, of an image that you might load or an image you might get from a camera, all of the colors of that image are stored in one giant array. And you can loop through that entire array to read all those colors and manipulate those colors. So I'll also include a link below to an online tutorial um, and some other videos about images and pixels that you can look at that this will give you kind of the foundation for. Okay, so hopefully um, this video was helpful and you saw a little bit of processing three and some nice circles and a strangely colored shirt that, does it really blend in with the background? Yes, yeah, see, look, you can see the background. Nobody cares about that, but it's interesting to me and I'm gonna say goodbye now before that camera shuts off, goodbye. <laughs>